exploration at the frontier of human intellect and machine mastery, Jordan Peterson issues a stark warning on the looming perils of artificial intelligence. Brace yourselves as he unravels the dystopian dance between human consciousness and technological dominance, revealing a future where our very essence collides with the creations of silicon sentience. Peterson's urgent call to navigate the uncharted waters of AI unfolds in a dramatic narrative, a cautionary tale echoing through the digital corridors, urging us to confront the profound questions that await at the crossroads of humanity and the algorithmic unknown. So this AI system to general language processing model was released about a week ago, a week and a half ago, and uh, I, I went and interacted with it. You can, it's an AI system, artificial intelligence system. It basically is trained on, well, a massive corpus of, of spoken and, or of text. The autonomous cars that are being developed you know, people still think about those as cars, but that isn't what they are. They're autonomous self-learning robots. And the fact that they happen to take the form of cars at the moment is almost irrelevant. You know, they're no more cars than cars were horseless buggies, right? They're a whole new thing. And what's really interesting about robots like that is that they basically, they're all identical, right? More or less. Jordan Peterson delivers a stark warning about the impending future of AI, raising profound concerns. But you can certainly see how that's going to get out of hand in a staggering way, like it has in China on the digital currency front. Because once every single bloody thing that you buy can be tracked, let's say by a government agency, then a tremendous amount of your identity has now become public property. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world. And so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. The breakneck speed of AI development emerges as a source of disquiet, prompting contemplation on its implications. And what that means is that when one learns something, every one of them learns it at the same time. And so even if they're not very bright, if there's 10 million of them, or 100 million of them, and they're all learning one thing a day, that's 100 million new things a day that every one of them is learning. And so they're mapping the road and they're learning how to operate in a natural environment, which is a really big deal. Like it's a really, really big deal. They're learning to map the perception of the world onto action, which is really the definition, a, re a good definition in some sense of intelligence. Well, I guess the downside would be, you know, is it, is it possible for it to exist in a very protected environment? Now, you've been working on that technically, so a couple of practical questions there is this gadget that you've been starting to develop do you have anything approximating a commercial timeline for its release? Peterson paints a chilling picture where even our identity becomes vulnerable, exposed to the whims of rapidly advancing AI. We don't even know if we need to be worried about Facebook because God only knows if it'll even exist in five years. It could even be the same with Google. So, you know, we're worried about machines that are changing so fast that we can't figure out what exactly we should be worried about. Because I mean, who was thinking about YouTube five years ago? No one, it's like cute cat videos. Who cares about YouTube? But it turns out that YouTube is an unbelievably powerful social force because it makes the spoken word as universally transmissible and as permanent as the written word, right? So it's a Gutenberg revolution. And it might even be more profound than Gutenberg revolution because it's possible that people can listen better than they can read and they can listen when they're doing other things, which is what happens in the podcast world. And lots of my students now listen to podcasts instead of listening to music, or they listen to podcasts instead of reading. You know, they speed them up. I mean, these are massive, massive technological changes, and they're all happening in parallel. We have no idea what the consequences of that are going to be. Delving into the depths of AI's evolution, Peterson elucidates the genuinely unsettling facets that lie ahead. AI systems will be able to calibrate 
their linguistic knowledge against knowledge of images in the world soon, and that's basically what scientists do, right? Because scientists will take a verbal hypothesis and then test it against the actual world. And if the hypothesis and the world fit, then you think, well, that's scientifically verified. And Keller thinks that, that AI systems will be able to do that pretty soon. And pretty soon means as soon as someone builds one that can do it, because we the tech is already in place. And so I have no idea what that's going to mean, you know, and it could easily lead us astray. So here's something that's going to happen in the next year. So imagine now you're a lonesome, lonesome guy and you can, uh, you can get a digital friend, a woman, and uh, she can talk to you like chat GPT talks to you and listen like chat GPT listens to you, which is maybe if you're really lonesome and alienated more than anyone has ever listened to you in your life. And then soon she'll not only listen to you as a text interface, but she'll be a fully rendered 3D, well, let's say 2D photorealistic fully rendered animation indistinguishable from a genuine image of a person, image of a genuine person, and then that'll be 3D for your, you know, Oculus headset. And then, well, that'll be like just right now. That'll be the, that'll be the value proposition, right? Is you'll be able to turn your virtual girlfriend into your virtual partner. And who knows what that'll do? I've been thinking about doing that on the on something approximating the IQ testing front, you know, because people keep gerrymandering the measurement of general cognitive ability. But I could imagine putting together a, a sophisticated blockchain corpus of, let's say, general knowledge questions, a very, and ChatGPT can generate those like mad, by the way. So you can imagine a data bank of 150,000 general knowledge questions that was blockchain, so nobody can muck about with the answers, from which you could derive random samples of general ability tests that would be, well, they'd be 100% robust, reliable, and valid, and nobody could met, nobody could gerrymander them. Just the way Bitcoin stops fiat currency producers from inflating the currency, the same thing could happen on the knowledge front. So I guess that's the sort of thing that you're, that you're referring to. Anxiety mounts as the pace of machine transformation accelerates leaving us struggling to discern the precise nature of our worries. Well, we'll see. I mean, Elon Musk, one of the things he's working on, see, he, he thinks that the world will be controlled by whoever produces the most functional AI system the fastest because there'll be a first, a first mover advantage. And one of the things Musk has been working on for a long time are distributed AI systems so that you'll have your own artificial intelligence to protect you against well, let's say against Google's artificial intelligence, for starters. Uncertainty looms large on the horizon, driven by the relentless and unpredictable changes in AI technology. A, a self-help book is like that in a primitive way. And I mean, yes. because it's essentially, it's essentially a spiritual guide in that if you equate the movement of the spirit with forward movement through the world, like faith-based forward movement through the world. And so this would be the next, the next iteration of that in some sense. I mean, that's what we've been experimenting with this system that I mentioned that contains all the lectures yes. that I've given and so forth. I mean, you can now ask it questions, which means it's, it's a book, but it's a book personalized to your query. Peterson forewarns of a future where AI systems seamlessly integrate linguistic and visual knowledge, blurring once distinct boundaries. But there are things, and everyone on, in the audience should know this, there are things coming down the pipeline on the artificial intelligence front that are just going to make your hair stand on end within the next year. Because there is so much transformation going on in that domain. And, and that's been the case, particularly for the last six months, that it's it's almost unimaginable. You're going to see things you just can't possibly. How many of you clap? How many of you know what Chat GBT is? Okay. So well, I'll, not very many. So I'll tell you what Chat GPT is, just so you know, because you need to know this. And I don't know what sort of technological revolution this is. Gutenberg press level. It's something like that. This is a big deal. 
So it's derived its models of the world from the analysis of human speech, essentially. It, it isn't using real world data yet, but that will be happening certainly within the next year. The potential for AI to mislead becomes a disconcerting reality, posing intricate challenges to navigate in the evolving landscape. Robots have been tricky, you know, but I can't imagine that's more than 10 years away. And that's just one thing that's going to happen, maybe not even the most surreal thing. You know, pretty soon we'll be contending with the fact that someone will be able to generate a photo, realistic version of Donald Trump and have him say something absolutely reprehensible and spread it everywhere just before election night. And there'll be a real confusion about whether he said it or didn't. So what do we do when our representations of reality can be falsified? Now, you know, I was talking to my son about that today and he thinks we'll get into an arms race right away because there'll be technologies that can detect whether video is artificial. But then, you know, there'll be a race because other technologies will learn how to fool that technology and you know maybe we'll be able to stay on the edge where we can still detect what's real and what isn't but i don't think we're doing a very good job of that right now on social media you know because social media it's kind of like the world except it's way more demented and the problem with that is that it makes the whole world look demented a somber prophecy unfolds as peterson asserts that the world's fate may hinge on the producer of the most advanced ai so my concern fundamentally is that these machines will reflect us ethically. And that should be frightening because I wouldn't say that our ethical house is particularly in order. So they're going to magnify what we are. You know, so, you know, the Google guys can talk about the mind of God, but that's making the presumption that the thing that we're building will be a good thing. And I don't think that it will be a good thing because it will reflect us. In a poignant conclusion, Peterson underscores the dual nature of AI, holding the promise of human progress or serving as the harbinger of our downfall. So you're envisioning a future very rapidly, it's already here, where we're already androids. And that is already the case because a human being with an iPhone is an android. Now, we're kind of, we're still mostly biological androids, but it isn't obvious how long that's going to be the case. And so what that means, like I've, I've, I've laughed for years, you know, I have a hard drive on which everything I've worked on has now been stored since 1984. And I joke, you know, there's more of me in the hard drive than there is in me. And <laughs> it's not a joke really, you know, because- Yeah, it's, it's real. It's, it's real. real, right? There's tens of thousands of documents on that hard drive. And weirdly enough, I know where every single one of them is. So, wow. So so now we're we're going to be in a situation. So what that means is we're in a situation now where a lot of act, of what actually constitutes our identity has become digital. And we're we're already being in relationship to that digital identity mostly by credit card companies. Now, I would say to some degree they're benevolent masters because the credit card companies watch what you spend and so how you behave, where you go, and they broker that information to other interested capitalist parties. Now, the downside of that obviously is that these parties know often more about you than you know about yourself. I've read stories, for example, of advertisements for baby clothes being targeted to women who A, didn't know they're pregnant, or if they did, hadn't revealed it to anyone else. You know, you hear babies have no theory of mind. It's like, uh, yeah, no, they can imitate. That's pretty bloody amazing, man. Like you haven't seen robots that can do that yet. Although there are robots now that you can teach by moving their, their arms. You move their arms and then they'll do it. And so you can actually program them by moving them and then they'll just repeat it. And so they're getting close to imitation. They're really getting close and then look that out, man because they're going to be imitating each other as well as us, and they're going to do it so fast, you just won't be able to believe it.